When a game gets announced, your first feeling is, okay, are people going to like this? Are people going to get excited about this? You've got a secret. You know, a little bit of a secret and you want to share it with everybody because everyone's going to be super excited once it comes out. The atmosphere in the office is just incredibly hectic. I had a little bit of anxiety because that's normal because that's what happens when you're about to announce something. Everybody here is excited about this. The real question is, are they going to appreciate it for what it is? The things that we think about and, and get really anxious about in the continuation of you know, such a big franchise like Borderlands is always the, are we providing something in the game that fans are going to react to and want? Sometimes I'm a little nervous that people will look at this and say, why isn't it Borderlands 3? Because we wanted to tell more stories that take place in the world that's here. And also between Borderlands 1 and Borderlands 2, we're trying to give them something for, for everyone who still has their consoles and still wants to play more Borderlands, you know? I have no idea. Because I know we wanted to do something with the Bandit Bus. That was always the, the intent there, was that they made something. This takes place chronologically after Borderlands 1. That could literally be the blue bus from Borderlands 1. They just stole it or whoever. The idea that they somehow got a hold of that bus and then threw Bandit crap on top of it is, is pretty good. <laughs> The idea for the pre-sequel basically came about where Randy Pitchford worked something out with 2K where we wanted to make another Borderlands game, but also wanted to be able to work with 2K Australia to, to make it basically, something that we wouldn't make entirely internally. They finished up Bioshock Infinite, and they had some, some band. What they wanted is know what their next big adventure was. We felt like there was just a lot more that we could be doing in the Borderlands universe, and the idea of another standalone experience had come up. It really came from a sort of mutual momentum to the logical place of what can we do that would be fun and cool, tell a cool story, and let us work with these really great guys in Australia. continue with that flip yeah here it won't be able to aim at you won't be able to shoot at you because no. it's not facing you yeah yeah because, well that, that that's fine though because that was the original problem that we were having if we tried to turn him around he would yeah he would wig out of it it's the AI component only supports three that's so what i start yeah. a loop yeah. and an end hmm. so unless pat codes in something specifically for its support for animation yeah. so it looks good uh, we need it in three parts but that's why I was saying 2K Australia was actually formed as Irrational Games Australia way back in 1999. We're celebrating our 15 year anniversary this year. Same as Gearbox, it's a kind of a funny coincidence. We just kind of wrapped up 10 years of development on Bioshock 1, 2 and Bioshock Infinite last year and that's when we came about working on this game, Borderlands the pre-sequel. The way, way it generally works is uh, I think a lot of the design uh, and, and narrative stuff is handled over here. We have a lot of really talented art guys over in uh, Dallas who handle all of the direction which we then kind of implement over here. So there's, there's a lot of uh, different like studios working on this and when we have to sort of juggle between it, but it seems to work pretty well. We found a lot of similarities between the, the way we work to the point where our strengths just come out naturally. I never would have expected a, um, that Australians would get along really well with Texans. <laughs> There's just something between our two studios, we seem to get each other pretty well. It's very important that we reach our goals every week because at this point there's nothing that we can say oh well we keep it for later, we'll see that later because there won't be any later. If there's a time in the project where everybody needs to give everything, it's right now. Gearbox is enabling Australia to really bring their creative vision to it, but Australia is respecting the experience and everything that Gearbox has done to, to build the brand. I mean, I am happy to take some credit for, for, for Borderlands generally existing. I'm actually really proud of that. But it doesn't exist without Gearbox and the team, the people. And there's some really cool stuff that shows up. Every day you go peek over someone's shoulder or wander in the designer room and see somebody building something that I never thought of, never imagined. It's two great teams. Uh, working on this project, doing some really, really fun and cool stuff. Between 
in Borderlands 1 and Borderlands 2, we have this really interesting story that we've never told. There are a couple of quests in this game that are just ridiculous. In Borderlands 1, the moon is a solid piece of rock. In Borderlands 2, it's all cracked and, and damaged. There's a space station up there. Handsome Jack is taking charge. It's fun delving into his character and getting to see another side of Jack and understand his story. I'm super stoked to bring that story to the players.